Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, welcome, uh, Kathy. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too, yeah, and to all is, of our listeners. Yes, this is uh, be airing on Thanksgiving Day, uh, November the 28th, uh, which is late this year. So it'll be another regular short a little devotion, but just a way to kick off your day. Uh, to spend time thinking about, you know, God's perspective and, uh, you know, the, the privilege we have uh, about this is that, you know, we, we truly, you know, and God says, uh, have a heart of thanksgiving mm -hmm. and every good gift is from the father and keep, keep understanding that and, and praising God for that, you know, with a heart of thanksgiving uh, that lifts us up by the way to praise and to keep looking to him. Mm-hmm because he can deliver our issues. He can resolve things. He can, you know, provide covenant. Uh, we certainly are privileged in this country uh, of economics of how we live and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what a privilege we have. So we're thankful for it. Um, and as we, we think about celebrating this day, uh, you know, just a reminder that um, it actually started uh, in uh, 1621 mm -hmm. uh, with the Puritans and, um, it's interesting uh, that they were fleeing an oppressive uh, religious environment, right? And that was the, you know, where the the king, uh, the Church of England, where they were basically operating under a very strict uh, religion system. Like, for example, if you were, and it's kind of similar to you know what happens now in various parts of the world, but if you were caught worshiping outside of the church, you were you were put in jail. Wow. So it was really That's hard for us to fathom, right? <laughs> yeah, it's hard it's hard for us to fathom, you know, that you have to follow these rules and if you don't, you know, that you know, so it was very political. Mm -hmm. And the Puritans, Miles Standish and you know, people like that that you know, said, Well, uh, America's already been discovered and we have, you know, some colonies over there, so let's let's go ahead and get a boat of, of Puritans uh and go across and uh, there's actually a, a pretty famous painting of the group praying in preparation for gathering people together and, mm. you know, and coming. We know it, we had the Mayflower. They had a second boat called the Speedwell and they were to go, supposed to go together. Um, and there were about a hundred people. So think about these boats are about a hundred feet long. So a uh, hundred people in one boat would be pretty crowded. Right. So they were going to have two boats, 50-50, uh, going across. They started out and the uh, Speedwell started taking on water because it wasn't airtight. So they, they went back, fixed it, did it again. They took on more water and they went back and said, okay, this boat ain't going to make it. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to get there. So let's all get on the Mayflower, which they did. So think of, uh, and it was 65 days to go across on the ocean. Now, because they were back and forth fixing the boat, they missed the weather window. Mm. So they sailed, they were supposed to sail in August, June, July, and August and get there at the end of August. Well, they didn't sail until the end of August and got there in November. Mm. And they hit all these storms and a lot of people died just from, uh, you know, from that. And then they landed and instead of landing in a time where they could have harvest and food and that kind of stuff, they landed in, in frozen temperatures and no, no ground. And so they were destitute, literally destitute, because uh, they'd eaten all their food and they didn't know what to do. And the Algonquin Indians noticed them and said, well, why don't we help you? Mm. And they provided shelter and they said, you know, and they, they said, we're going to, we're going to throw on a feast for you guys. And then we're going to provide food for you during the winter, which they did. Uh, but the feast is the first Thanksgiving. That's um, amazing, right? And, you know, they actually had turkey and, and things like that because it was plentiful and all the bountiful things that we see a pictures of, they, they actually did. So that colony decided that they would celebrate this celebration every year. Mm-hmm. And they, and we've done it now since 4, 1621 and it's remarkable of, and again, it's just a day off and just give Thanksgiving and they were giving thanks right. truly to God 
that they survived it. By the way, half of them died in the next year. So they had a lot of, a lot of uh, adversity, but they did make it through and then they established, mm-hmm. you know, and they were the, the, four, the forerunners really of independence. And then Abraham Lincoln in 1963, uh, in the middle of the Civil War, because uh, remember, we've been practicing Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Well, he made it a national holiday. And he, he asked both sides, North and South, right. hey, everybody, take the day off from fighting each other. In the middle of the war, and, yes. <laughs> and and let's let's have celebration and let's thank God, you know, for who we are. And of course, you know, as we, as he goes into it, that's after that is when he, he wrote and spoke the Gettysburg Address, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, and brought the country together. So we, we now have a national holiday because of Abraham Lincoln, but we celebrated it for hundreds of years before that, you know, so- you know, what a, what a privilege we have as Americans mm-hmm. to uh, have a heritage like that, one, and then two, uh, that Abraham Lincoln, and, and the day of Thanksgiving, even when he announced it, wasn't just a day off. Right. It literally, it literally was, we're going to thank God for what we have and what we will be. And even though we're in the middle of this turmoil, mm-hmm. uh, he basically said, God's going to resolve this. And let's, it's, let's thank God for it. Yeah. It's funny. Even as you share that, I'm reminded of our friends in Israel. We have been pa- taping with um, Rabbi yep. Ephraim and yep. Eric on from Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and having them share. And they've shared about how in the midst of their war, you know, the war that is going on, they have still been celebrating, you know, they celebrated Rosh Hashanah and they, they've been celebrating the high holidays and still enjoying that. And it's great to hear the heritage of what our holidays in America have have come from. But I'm also just reminded that that is a biblical precedent that God has set aside. You know, he has set up from long before that there would be times of remembrance and feast of celebration to remember the goodness of God, among other right. things. And I'm reminded even of the simple verse, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and enter his courts with praise. And as we have been talking about walking in the kingdom, truly entering his gates with thanksgiving. That's one of the one of the postures of entering in the, into the kingdom is truly coming to him with thankfulness in that um, recognizing who he is and who we are, right? Amen. Yeah, to that. Um, and as we celebrate, actually, David gave a, a great, uh, let's say, description of celebration in all respects. So if you'd go to Psalm 128, short Psalm 1 to 6, Uh, But this is really the essence of how we look at uh, Thanksgiving. Sure. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Yeah, amen. Shalom. Uh, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. And in fearing the Lord, he actually describes it. Um, And we've actually talked about it in the series, uh, Walking with God, who walk with God. And Mm -hmm. so he says, um, as you gather around the table, uh, celebrate. And he said, first of all, that you have work. And that it, it it would go well for you. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we would be thankful for our income, for our work. Uh, maybe there's difficulty with it, but God said, if you have a heart, you know, let me bless you with that. And I want it to go well for you. So, you know, we celebrate that. He said, may your, may your marriage, you know, be thriving and joyful uh, with the wife, with the husband, you know, have a joy as a, as a couple. So be thankful for that. Uh, and then he said, your kids, you know, are around the feast table. That's really what that says mm-hmm. there, is that. It's kind of description. When I when I describe this biblically, I say, you know, think of Thanksgiving. Right, right. That's what life's supposed to be like, you know. And so may your Thanksgiving around the table, you know, be fun, you know, come up with ways to, you know, be thankful. Uh, we go around the table and, and uh, thank, uh, say, what, what do you have a thing that you could be thankful for this year? And we speak that and just keep bringing that forward of you know, let's enjoy the day. Even if you have difficult relatives, be thinking about how you could make it joyful, overlook the the issues, don't get engaged in those issues. And hey, let's just celebrate and, and have some fun, you know, together and mm-hmm. uh, sit around the table and having the feast. And uh, and then may you see your children's children, you know, and that, you know, bring your grandchildren. That's really the picture of Thanksgiving is, you know, it's grandpa all the way down to grandkids or great grandkids. 
and we all just sit around the table and enjoy each other right. uh, in, a, in a way of celebration. And celebration is our hearts are directed toward God yes. with truly uh, a moment of Thanksgiving. And, and mm -hmm. again, you know, not to d dismiss issues or things that are going on, but uh, kind of like with Abraham Lincoln, you know, it's like, well, why don't you just take a break? They and were just in the middle of a war and they took a break yeah, just yeah, to let's be thankful. <laughs> let's, just, let's just celebrate what mm -hmm. we do have. And maybe yeah. that'll soften our hearts and, and direct us to God with, That's I have so more good. to give you. I have more blessing for you. And we, and we pray and Kathy and I, you know, we're going to have great times. I've got 18 people around the table and you guys, of course, uh, have your families come over. I think at the, that next we're going right, to have, the... yeah, we're going to have a group of 10, I think at our house for Thanksgiving day. So it'll be super fun. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Linda, you know, she's already working on things that, you know, she can do to make it special what she does and, uh, it's going to be fun. And so we just, we just pray that all of you would have a joy of uh, a day of fun, a day of joy, uh, bring Thanksgiving to God. And we celebrate that. We're thankful for the audience that listens to yes, us. Yes, we are. Uh, we're thankful for the privilege of the technology that, you know, we've been getting better and better and it's easier and easier, you know, for us to do this. And, and we just had, like you said, we just taped Eric, uh, Sirkin and uh, Rabbi Ephraim from Israel, literally just uh, an hour or so, or so ago. And we're on technology because they're mm -hmm. sitting over there in Jerusalem and we're Right, right. And we're just like we're next door, you know, and <laughs> it's amazing. You know, we're thankful, so thankful and what God is doing. And by the way, this will be a podcast, I think in December, but while we're talking to him, Eric's nephew, who's in the army, and just got back from Lebanon and, and Hezbollah. Yeah, is just on a couple day leave taking yeah, a break, he, right? Yeah, he just like walks in the room and uh, and uh, Eric said, you want to talk to him? Yeah, we do. <laughs> and it and was so fascinating. We had, we had this know. conversation with this kid and you'll appreciate just mm. just the viewpoint, you know, and the mm -hmm. life of it and the expect. And it was, and see, Kathy and I, we even talked about this, is that we're so thankful that God cares about stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. that he that he gives us these privileges that are because he's giving them to us. You know, right. have Eric, Pastor Rabbi, Denny, this kid, Miles. We know that it's God's work and we thank God for that work. And we get to see it all the time. So we just pray that all of you would be thankful and uh, enjoy the day and uh, really uh, celebrate uh, with a heart of thanksgiving uh, what God is doing. So Heavenly Father, we lift that up. Uh, we give you great praise and honor and thanksgiving. Uh, we truly are thankful. We know that every good gift is from above. We know that it's not what we do. It's the fact that we walk with you and receive the bounty of life and the fullness of life. And, and I pray that all of us would, uh, as we've been teaching, to live in the kingdom, to even experience more of this wonderful covenant life and for which we're thankful for. And we gave you great thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Rich, for sharing it. Happy Thanksgiving to you listeners. We look forward to seeing you again next time. If you have questions, again, always send them in, questions at AbideMinistries.com. Enjoy your day, posture your heart in gratitude to God, and celebrate well. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.